Closed captioning is brought to you by IT&E Life in Motion. KUAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust. Serving Micronesia since 1938. Matson Navigation, serving Guam and Micronesia for 20 years. Cars Plus, Dodge Challenger, the undisputed champion. IP&E, fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurant, located in Tamuning and Dededo. Always open, always local. Coming up on your primetime news, the tax refund lawsuit goes before the Supreme Court. Valerie Maige has that story, plus details on the ethics investigation into Congresswoman Madeleine Berdayo, and staffers were only going above and beyond. The governor's office defends DPW after an audit turned up indications of fraud. Hi everybody and good evening. The House Ethics Committee needs more time to complete its investigation of Delegate Madeleine Berdayo. In announcing its decision Tuesday to conduct a further review, the committee also released details of the allegations against the eight-term Democrat. Nestor Lecanto explains in our first report. According to a 43-page report posted to the Ethics Committee website, Bordalio is under scrutiny for renting her Tamuning home to the Japanese consulate, which may violate House rules for receiving profit from a foreign government. The report states a former chief of staff raised concerns about the rental agreement, but Bordalio stated there was nothing wrong and declined to discuss it with the Congressional Ethics Office. She is also under review for receiving free lodging, meals, and amenities at the Outrigger Guam, a hotel owned by her sister's family and also for using her representational allowance to pay for some of the lodging expenses. The rules do not allow members to pay for lodging while in their home districts. The committee is recommending dismissal of a third set of allegations. It found that there is no reason to believe that she used congressional staff to help maintain her rental property or assist in the Miss Guam World beauty pageant. Berdalia released a statement saying she is cooperating with the ethics review and believes there has been no violation of federal law or house rules. She says she first began renting her home to the Japanese consul in 1993, well before she was elected to Congress. She also asserts that staying at her sister's hotel is also not a violation. Berdalia says the complaints are politically motivated, but her office indicated she would make no further comments beyond her written statement. The Ethics Committee also notes that a further review of the complaint does not itself indicate that any violation has occurred or reflect any judgment on behalf of the committee. There was no indication from the statement when a final determination will be released. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lecanto. Well, the legal battle has begun. The lawsuit over the governor's Tran bill getting its day in the high court. The failed measure hoped to get tax refunds out to people faster. And joining us with the very latest is Valerie Maike. Bree and Jay, some heated moments in the Supreme Court over the tax refund case. The decision now rests in the hands of the justices. A clear interpretation and application of the Organic Act and what constitutes the affirmative vote of the Guam legislature, that's what the administration wants to find out. Governor's legal counsel, Sandra Miller. If applying the Organic Act, Section 1423B, there were 13 senators present and voting. There were more than eight, so the first element of a quorum was met. As KUAM reported, the Tran bill went before special session where it received seven votes for passage. Six senators voted no, while two were excused. According to the legislature's standing rules, eight votes are needed for any bill to pass. The governor, however, contends the Organic Act trumps those rules. It states that a majority vote is all that is needed for legislation to go through. However, the legislature's legal counsel, Julian Uggen, argues. That in the same way the governor is trying to frame this case as concerning the presentment issue, he's used that, he cited the, those sections in the, in the filings, and it's about the legislature failing to, pa to present to him a duly passed bill. We now wait for a written decision to come down. We, of course, will share those details once we get them. Brian and Jace, back to you. All right, thanks so much, Val, for that report. Find out more on KUM.com right now. Well, the back and forth between the two branches of government does not end in high court as the administration and lawmakers alike are now battling out after Governor Calvo vetoed the budget bill. Nick Delgado explains in our next story. Spending $40 million the government just doesn't have. Speaker B.J. Cruz making that point in response to Governor Eddie Calvo's veto of the budget bill late Monday. 
Cruz stating while the governor might be doing his best petulant child in the toy store routine, I don't believe my colleagues will risk a government shutdown just because Adeloupe is fonder of temper tantrums than hard truths. Vice Speaker Teresa Lai says it came as a surprise. I thought uh, we, we had a pretty solid budget. I mean, of course, the money is tight, but... Uh Everybody, um, we're working our hardest and we are hoping that uh, the Department of Revenue Tax is going to come through with uh, increased revenues. And if we see that, we've all pledged to come back in and, and do more with the increased revenues. But until then, uh, uh, I think the Speaker will be calling us back to session and uh, I'm hoping for an override. Calvo vetoed the $959 million fiscal year 2018 budget passed by the legislature and issuing this special address. I could not sign a budget that would affect our island in such a way that our people's safety, their health, or education would be at such a risk. Calvo also pointing out how the budget would add negative impacts to the island's tourism industry, which already took a hit after the recent North Korean threat. The last thing we need is for this trend to continue. Declining economic activity will signal job losses. The spiral may be difficult to bounce back from. Now with that said, now is the time to arm the Guam Visitors Bureau with the resources they need. Public safety concerns also brought up. DEPCOR Director Tony Lamarena says the cuts could lead them back down a path towards federal receivership. With what was passed, there's a shortfall uh, of $2.6 million strictly to fund the clinic services. Well, this could possibly uh, put us back into receivership. The administration arguing against cutting corners to fund the government. Leaders have until the end of this month to pass a budget in order to prevent a government shutdown. Lawmakers are now working to finalize a date to get back on the session floor. What happens there, we'll have to wait and see. Reporting for Guam's News Network, Guahusinic Delgado. Well, the governor's office argues that an audit that turned up Indicators of potential fraud and misuse at Public Works served to ding employees for their dedication. The OPA says the audit argues otherwise, saying the findings speak for itself. Issa Bata has more. DPW is claiming that they did nothing wrong. That's what Glenn is saying, that he's claiming they did nothing wrong. So, you know, uh, let the audit speak for itself. Public Auditor Doris Flores Brooks is referring to the recent heavy equipment audit that found potential ethical violations and significant internal control lapses at DPW. The audit stemmed from an allegation that equipment was being loaned out to other companies for personal use. The allegation could not be substantiated. If it is going to be placed at uh, a convenient place because that's where the project is, then that should be documented. And there should be you know, evidence that, hey, this is being parked at this DPW employees because of and this did not happen. DPW Director Glenn Leon Guerrero, however, said he disagreed with six out of ten audit findings, adding that although free services may have been accepted from an employee in the past, it was due to the agency's lack of resources. Adeloupe characterized the audit as dinging employees for going above and beyond to get the job done. He was allowing it, but that tends to show his favoritism to that particular employee and to turn a blind eye if that employee need something oh well because he did this let him do that you know because he loaned us this equipment well we'll let him loan ha have and use that other equipment because he was so kind to let us use his equipment however leon guerrero argues use of volunteered services was for the public's benefit department of public works is guilty on a lot of fronts and most of our guilt is we don't document and so we're going to change that, and we're also going to change some of our policies. Meanwhile, Deputy Public Auditor Yuka Hachinova says the biggest issue was simply the lack of internal controls. However, she's hopeful DPW's new fleet management system will lead to improvements. So now they're moving into an automated process, which we hope will help improve things. But again, it has to be with uh, the tone at the top. It has to be supported by an ethical ethical uh, environment. Leon Guerrero has committed to requiring managers and supervisors to take ethics and fraud awareness training and has requested the OPA to conduct an annual audit. Hechenova says future review of DPW's fleet management system may be a next step. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Issa Baza. Also tonight and from court, defendant Alan Agabaga was too quick to give an alibi, so says Guam police officer Bert Carbolito, who took a stand in day two of the aggravated murder retrial. Carbolito was one of the first to arrive at the Oceanside apartment complex in Timuning 
where Shelly Bernstein was found dead in her home four years prior. He went to Eastern Guyton Mobile to purchase <laughs> cigarettes. And I don't know where he just pulls a receipt out of his pocket and says, look, I have my receipt right here. Look at the time I was there. I wasn't even asking for that. But so I, I kept that to me, that race of flags. How do you mean race of flags? Uh, that uh, it's, it's suspicious. Why is it suspicious? Uh, to the extent that uh, I felt that he was giving me a timeline and an alibi. Without, I, I, didn't, I wasn't even asking. Trial will resume. give you the comfort and security you need it's a beautiful day. wherever you are. Gov Guam employees, retirees, and survivors enroll today. bathrooms to fresh food. We're on a mission to make you leave happier than when you arrived. So whatever your journey, we're here. Welcome to service. Welcome to Shell. Serving the islands for over 30 years. Share your story at Shell Foodies Guam on Instagram and Facebook. Hashtag Station Stories. Hashtag Shell Guam. According to Deputy Superintendent for DOE Erica Cruz, 140 of those iPads will go to the Guahan Academy Charter School, while 85 go to benefit fifth grade students at the Atacao and Estumbo Elementary Schools. Cruz says the iPads are part of the Striving Readers Program, 
funded through a five-year grant that expires at the end of July. Crew said the teachers at the 11 schools that benefited from the initiative were trained on how to The commission also discussed plans for Chairman Governor Eddie Calvo and member-at-large Dr. Lisa Natividad to represent them at a United Nations General Assembly in early October. The pair will update the UN on Guam's decolonization efforts. Well, a multi-agency workshop was held today to go over federal emergency management's threat and hazard identification and risk assessment measures. Officials say it helps agencies... who received a scholarship today was Chris's son. So stay tuned, sports is coming up next, but first here's weather. gigs of bonus data on every line every month to customers who bundle their services reviewers are calling the offer totes awesome best deal ever and yes visit gta.net for details i prepare i train through strength determination and focus You can overcome anything because every step, every move brings you closer to your goals. This is what makes you an alpha. The Down Syndrome Association of Guam exists to support families of individuals with Down Syndrome. We're a group of parents who have children with Down Syndrome and know the joys and challenges of raising them. For more information about the health, development, and education of a child or adult with Down Syndrome, please contact Vicki Ariola at 472-6114. The Cheers Guam Series presents the largest wine event of the year, Wine Fest 2017. Enjoy an evening with over 150 wines from around the world on Friday, October 6th, as the Hyatt Regency Ballroom transforms into an international wine extravaganza. Doors open at 6.30 p.m. General admission tickets are $66 and are available at the Hyatt Deli and all 76 Circle K locations. Super premium tickets are $180 and are available at the Hyatt Deli. Purchase your tickets today. Must be 21 years or older to attend. Savor the wines of the world at WineFest 2017. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J.
of an egg one. Chris Barnett with sports here. Montes, woohoo! Dr. Marianas Biba. Let's kick it off here. Great big, huge show. Let's do it. Bud Light Golden Hoops to Mooning Typhoons and the Chiefs take it to the court in the co ed division. Chiefs player Dylan Trusso, Truss. Conrad Berg inbound to Mike Bork. Pull up Jay in the corner, dropping for two. Chiefs with the early lead. Back the other way. Chiefs working the ball around the perimeter. Mark Evangelista to Juan Duaneus. Oh, the bank's open. Withdrawal. Duaneus hitting the deep ball off the backboard. Lance Corpus misses on the shot try inside the paint. The ball almost goes to Mooning's way, but Corpus. Rodman picking up the loose ball, gives it to Aaron Palconet for the finish. Conrad Berg now driving to the basket. Nice dish off to Jared Connolly for two of his 14 points in the game. Good little hesitation move in the post, guy. Lance Corpus made sure the next trip down court was going to be his. Corpus calling for the ball. Cell phone as he makes his way to the free throw line. Pull up Jay. Maulika. Jared Connolly, three-point shot, rims out. Bork with the position down low. Goes right back up for the basket. Bork finished with a team high, 15 points. And it was the Typhoons blowing by, getting the win, 51-42. Juan Duenius led the Chiefs in the loss with 15 points. Three-pointer here, good.